What a joy it is to come and share with you again these devotional moments. I want to return to the first chapter of the Gospel of Mark. The Bible says Jesus was in a house. It's presumed that that house belonged to Simon Peter. It was late. The evening had come, and there's knock at the door. People are gathering. They bring to him people who were sick diseased and demon possessed and the Bible says that Jesus cast out demons he healed those who were sick and diseased even at a late hour Mark goes on to tell us that early the next morning before the break of day that Jesus went out into a solitary place and there he prayed he went to a solitary place, an uninhabited place, a remote place. He got away from everything and everybody to pray. Every believer, every child of God needs a solitary place, a place of solitude, a quiet place, a private place, a place and a space where you can be alone with God, a place that provides you time and opportunity for self-examination and reflection. More and more these days, I just sit in a quiet place and begin to think about where God has brought me from, all God has brought me through, and then where God has brought me to. Here is Jesus, despite a full day of ministry, he got up early before day and went out into a solitary place and prayed. Jesus took time to pray. And if our Lord needed to pray, what about you and I? Prayer is a vital link between God and us. Like Jesus, we must break away from others to talk with God, even if we have to get up very early in the morning to do it. We often get too busy, too occupied, too active, too caught up in the rush of life, Consequently, our prayer life becomes shallow, thoughtless, and very mechanical. But Jesus got up early, went out into a solitary place, and there he was alone with God. There are those who think that they can live without prayer, but Jesus could not. He got up early went to this solitary place, and, and there he prayed. Why did he pray? Well, he was tired. He was physically, mentally, and spiritually drained. And many of us are constantly giving out much more than we are taking in. Quantity replaces quality. What we give out becomes thinner and thinner. Jesus prayed not only because he was drained and tired, but he was confronted with the applause and praise of the people. People were ready to follow him for what they could get out of him. Jesus didn't pray when things were going really bad. He also prayed when things were going really good. He communes with God. And one of the vital things about prayer we must all remember is that prayer is not a monologue. Prayer is a dialogue. In prayer, we talk to God, but also through prayer, God speaks to us. The story of a little girl who was on her knees praying one evening. Her mother looked in and the child was beside the bed praying. Her mother put some things away and she came back by the door and looked and the child was still on her knees. 
She did a couple more things, and finally she comes to the door, and the little girl is still on her knees. And she says, Baby, aren't you finished talking to God yet? And the little child turned and looked and says, Yes, Mother, I'm through talking to God. I'm down here waiting for God to talk back to me. Thank God we have the privilege of prayer. Prayer is a vital link in our relationship with God. Prayer is life's limitless reach. There is nothing that can arise in your life that's above or beyond the power of prayer. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this privilege of prayer. We thank you for being a prayer hearing and a prayer answering God. And now we come with our needs and our cares and we lay them at your feet. We pray your continued blessings upon our lives, our families, our communities, and our church. Bless us now, we pray, in the wonderful name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I want to remind you of our prayer calls Wednesday mornings at 7 a.m. and then again Saturday evenings at 7 p.m. Uh, Sunday morning, our Sunday school review will be at 8.45 followed by our 11 a.m. worship. And then to the members of the Mount Olive Church, following worship at 11 a.m., we're going to have our Souls to the Poles parade. We ask that you will come and go with us to the polls as we cast our ballots. We want you to invite and encourage others to come and go along with us. Let's not give up our right to vote. God bless you.